City Hall proposes heavy fines and jail time for littering, flooding forces evacuations in Letham. And Paho knows something Frank Anthony doesn't know. I am the Rico Bullford, and welcome to tonight's edition of Uncut News. Before we begin, do you have something important you want to leak without revealing your identity? Send us a tip on WhatsApp at 592-659-6151. In an effort to reclaim the Garden City from a wave of rubbish, City Hall is proposing a range of bylaws that will, once approved, attract hefty fines or prison time for litterbugs. The anti-littering regulations have proposed fines between $35,000 to $500,000. There's also a late fee of $10,000 a day, and after 72 hours, violators are liable to a six-month imprisonment. Mayor Ubraj Narain said these bylaws were already approved by the council, and consultations with the public will now take place before they are signed into law. The mayor also encouraged other municipalities to follow their lead with such bylaws. Five persons have been charged with conspiring to commit a felony in connection with a multi-million dollar GRA check fraud scheme. Yesterday, Romesh Chand Singh, Charisha Tapin, Kalmaran Pasad, Devendra Motiram, and Anush Khan proved that the only two things that seemingly unite all Guyanese is crime or party. Together, the four men are charged with forging two checks amounting to $19 million in favor of Tappen, claiming that it was issued by the GRA, while Tappen faces two separate forgery charges and was remanded to prison, while the men have been released on $300,000 bail for each charge. They are expected back in court on June 21st. According to reports, GBTI recently processed $23.8 million in fake checks from the GRA. The GRA is considering seeking compensation from the bank for the money withdrawn from the GRA's accounts. Around 5 a.m. this morning, 40-year-old Lopez Cartianos Yosmarita was fatally stabbed during a domestic altercation at a home on Charlotte Street in Georgetown. According to police, Yosmarita was armed with a knife while he was attempting to physically remove the suspect, a relative, from the premises. The suspect was able to disarm and stab Lopez in his lower back. The suspect is presently in police custody. On Sunday night, taxi driver Kemraj Jadionandan broke his cousin's arm during a disagreement over the taxi fare. 22-year-old laborer Chat Kumar George and his brother hired their cousin Kemraj for a Sustike walk and promised to pay him $15,000. He takes them up, and when they get back to Freedom Hoop, Kumar promised to pay him back tomorrow. They start to row, and apparently Kemraj wasn't one for the long duck, cause he ups and lashed his cousin in the elbow with the steel rod, breaking his arm in the process. Kumar is in the hospital, while Kemraj is currently in police custody. Now it's time to tell you about Specify's car of the day. Currently on sale, this is 2009 Toyota Axio. It comes with mock rims, new tires, DVD stereo, reverse camera, and much more. Buy cash for $2.7 million, or pay down as low as $540,000 down, with around $61,000 monthly for four years, and it's yours. Call the WhatsApp 662-0844 for more info, or visit the showrooms at Lot 171 Peter Rose Street, Queenstown, or Lot 2 Lamar Street, and tell them the Rico sent you for this sweet, sweet deal. More late-night foolishness on the West Coast, as the police arrested 29-year-old businessman Mohammed Aladdin. This was after he allegedly forced a police patrol off the road, refused to submit himself to a breathalyzer test, and behaved in a disorderly manner for hours even after his arrest. The incident occurred just before midnight on Tuesday during curfew hours. The police claimed that not only was he drunk and disorderly, but he was also apparently armed as well. While he held a license for the gun, it was still confiscated out of an abundance of caution. I thought I already told you all about drinking and driving. Some idiots never learn. Wanted Burpees weed man Omet Lakaram turned himself in to CID headquarters yesterday. On May 11th, Kanim issued a wanted bulletin for the 47-year-old man. Wait, he's 47? Oh my, he looks terrible for 47. Must be the stress for being a weed man. Anyway, he was wanted in connection with the discovery of 94 kilograms of cannabis valued at over $18.6 million. This cash was found at Number 68 Village in Levis. 
Over on the Essex Repo Coast, around midnight Tuesday, two gunmen caught it off with over $3.3 million in electronics from the WD Malls at Charity. According to police, the two men held the desk clerk at gunpoint after posing as would-be guests. They took his keys and $5,000 from him before attempting and failing to bind his hand. One of the males then broke into a cell phone stall on the first floor and stole $3 million in cell phones and $300,000 worth of tablets before escaping. But all of it was found on CCTV footage. So if you see these two idiots about, you know, give the police a, a hand and, you know, snitch on them. Are you a truck owner that's losing money due to downtime while you wait for your parts to be imported? Now that's just stupid. Truck parts are already in Guyana at powered automotive truck spares and engine parts. They stock spares for Darth, Bedford TM, International Freight Liners, and Cummins Engines. Check them out at 1161 EE Eccles or WhatsApp them on telephone number 697-0171. Tell them the Rico sent you and get a discount. It's now time for today's Runner Report. Today, the nation recorded 153 new cases. There are now 349 persons dead with 16 persons in the ICU and 1,777 persons in home isolation. The total number of known cases in the nation now stands at 15,607. So please, people, wash your hands frequently. Avoid touching your nose and mouth and mask up before you leave the house. When you do leave home, try to avoid enclosed spaces and large crowds. And remember to give six feet of space between you and others. The flooding in the hinterland has now worsened. According to the CDC, there are reports of flooding in villages across regions 6, 9, and 10. The Kanji River is overtopping in Burbese, causing flooding in dozens of homes along its banks. The Burbese River has caused flooding in Kukwani, and heavy rainfall in Linden has also caused flooding in several neighborhoods. At the moment, evacuation efforts are underway in Letham, as continuous heavy rains have worsened overtopping from the Amazon River. Yes, the Amazon may be in Brazil, but floods don't respect borders, people. While the CDC has already sent enough hampers for 1,000 households, it may not be enough as most of the villages in Region 9 are currently underwater in some way, shape, or form. The CDC has already mobilized to help hundreds of households affected and is still assessing the situation. Do you want to grow your money? Sell Digicel Top Up. Become a Top Up vendor through Cellular Plus and make some extra cash to supplement your income at your business or your hustle. Call 685-3109 for more info. As of yesterday, 7% of the adult population has been fully vaccinated against the Rona. This translates to over 34,317 persons. The Ministry of Health also reported that 169,981, or 34.9% of the population, have received their first dose. The government yesterday received close to 68,000 doses of the Russian Sputnik V vaccine. This forms part of the 800,000 dose allotment, which is enough to vaccinate 400,000 people. And now for our stupid news of the day. While the WHO has confirmed that the Brazilian strain of the Rona is currently circulating in Guyana, the health minister admitted that he had absolutely no clue that it was. This was a full two days after the WHO made the announcement during an engagement with the media. However, Frank Anthony said that he has since requested a report from PAHO. For variants to be detected, samples need to undergo genomic sequencing to examine the strain. Since we don't have the capabilities to detect the different strains, nor have we found it to be enough of a priority to do so, Guyana has to send the samples to the regional lab in Trinidad for confirmation before we'd know absolutely anything about it. In February, we actually sent to the lab only 10 samples out of the thousands of samples we have on hand. All came back negative. Wow, surprisingly, right? But the thing that I think is even more stupid is that we just passed the largest budget in this nation's history, and yet they still didn't think it was worth it to allocate funds to ensure that we have a fully functioning lab that is able to process all of the samples. They did say they were allocating over $700 million for vaccines, but they did not go into detail on how much of the ministry's $53.5 billion budgets will actually go to fighting the Rona during the pandemic. So if you ask me, not allocating enough money to properly address the ongoing pandemic is pretty stupid. Hey Guyanese business people, are you looking for a great way to advertise your business? Search no more. Join one of the fastest growing business directories in Guyana. Register your business on snap.gy and get access to more eyeballs. And 
Wait for it. Wait for the best part. It's absolutely free. Get your business listed today on snap.gy. Moving on to our uncut news viewers poll question of the day. Every day we pose a question about current events in the nation, the region, the diaspora, and how you feel it relates to us. So, you give your sponsors in the comments, and we'll read the best ones in the following episode. Yes, today's question was, has the recent increase in consumer prices affected you? If so, how? Jay Jiram said, it's caused me to spend less on consumer goods, such as food and gas. Angie the Atheist said, this is the largest price increase we've had seen in over 10 years. Both the middle class and the poor people were highly affected by the lockdowns and the government did nothing to combat the projected effects of inflation. No salary increases, no tax reductions, and little or no new jobs created. All of our people are suffering. Edgar Zink said, No, ITAL is vital. Veggie prices remain the same in market. Hali Selassie. Yes, brethren, yes. Oena Bruce said, We are feeling quite harshly the effects of this inflation. Salaries remain the same, but we are paying more for less. The government really needs to use the oil money and grant every adult a sizable stimulus to give us a brace. Exactly! Give me my stimmy, that's what I say. I haven't even gotten the first one yet. So, for tonight's question, would you support the proposed anti-litter legislation, or would you consider a different way to deal with garbage in the Garden City? Think about that question and tell us in the comments below. If your response is good enough, we just might feature it in Thursday's episode. Anyway, that's all the time we have for tonight. Check us out tomorrow for another. Until then, I'm Nariko Bullford saying good night, folks. Hey, Uncut News viewers. Thanks for watching. You can subscribe by clicking on this button over here or click over there for more news. You can also drop a comment to let me know if you've made it to the end of the video. Goodbye for now!